Hello everybody, welcome to The Last Word. Newcastle Fans TV. Yes, hello everyone. Another winless performance. How many games is that now? I'm starting to actually lose track of how many games this has been, including League and Cup. What's it, six now? Seven? I've lost track. I've honestly lost track. However, four at the back. Much better. Let's, let's bring up the uh, lineups first of all. Much better with four at the back. Much better. In the second half, we were against Leeds, which was better playing at four at the back. It was getting better here today at Vicarage Road. I think that has to be the way forward. <sighs> Just frustrating at the result. But yeah, you can see the lineup there. Obviously, we've got a few injuries. It was Fernandez. And of course, it was Kieran Clark at the two centre backs replacing Lascelles. And surprisingly, Joe Willock made it. I was a little bit surprised because he was in the cast all week. So he did make it. He started in, in the most advanced midfield role. And of course, ESM was up top. Watford side, obviously, we're, 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 we're talking about them. Ismail Assar scored today. We talked about him in the build up. He's a threat. No surprise to see him on the score sheet today. But Watford very much very th a threat going forward. Defensively, they will give you chances. Of course, they've got several of Newcastle players. Rob Elliott, I think he was on the bench. He played midweek. Had Danny Rose at left back. He had Moussa Sissoko midfield. So, yeah, there's some notable, noticeable names. And, of course, fellow YouTuber, Ben Foster. But first half was all right, I thought. The first half was much better than what we have been probably all season in spells. We had a few chances. I remember Foster tipping over from Almira. And I remember a couple of corners coming back out in Longstaff. And they were saying to, you know, he's getting closer and closer. He put one just wide and one just over. And then the goal come. Great finish. Maybe Ben Foster should be doing a little bit better. But it sent, it sent us a lot. Absolutely mental. Have a look at Carl and his brother here. So, fantastic scenes, we're 1-0 up, great, great start, the scenes, everyone jumping around, what have you. And I thought, you know what, I thought there was a few people who were, had a good first half going in, obviously Watford were, like I say, a threat on the, on the, uh, on the other end. However, you talk about Joel Linton, I thought Joel Linton had a fantastic first half, strong, I thought he got the better of Feminica at right back. I thought Miguel Miron worked his socks off today, I was a little bit surprised why he was substituted in the second half, maybe he was tired, but didn't get that. So those two, and Sean Longstaff, obviously off the ball has been a lot better in the couple of, last couple of games but he scored his goal obviously great for him great for his confidence Newcastle go into the break 1-0 up and you're thinking right okay we can can we double our lead and ESM put it away we've had two one-on-one chances a day and we can't put them away in, and I think that's cost what a day and people say you're missing Callum Wilson yeah we are we are and for the first time this season Dwight Gill was brought on for eight minutes, but it didn't fall to him, unfortunately. But ASM, it's got to put that one on one away in that first half. Put that away. It's 2 0. I think that might be game over. He's dillying, dallying, and he's, oh, just put it away. Clip it over the goalkeeper. There's another, another one of them to come in the second half. But going at half time, you think, right, OK, there's chances. You know, can we bury the second half? So in comes the second half. The, f the first period, 15, 20 minutes, I thought we were fine. But as the game went on, I thought Watford were getting more and more in the game. They ended the game strongly better than us. I know we had that chance at the end with the one-on-one for come to. But for me, they were the better side in that second half. Pace up front, Dennis, and you've got Ismail Assar. And the cross comes in and we concede the goal. And I haven't seen it back just yet because the ball was flicked on. And there's Ismail Assar at the back post. So we'll have to say that back. Let us know in the comments who that was. Obviously, I'll, I'll probably be will by the time I've edited the video, of course. But disappointing, no one's near him. Free header, back post goal, again conceded. And we equalised. And then, as I say, Watford were ending the game much better. Much, much better. And the, the VAR goal, it was a, it was a shot and Darlow had a few saves to make. In, in, and in the first half as well, because I forgot about that. Palms it out wide, palms it out and it comes back. And then to go, then I think we saw, I might be wrong on that. And then it goes to VAR, and we think, I had to go because we, the Watford fans next to us for the first time, they were very quiet, mind. Very quiet, home ground. Only, only the opposite end was singing. But next to us, normally you've got fans battering and off each other next to one another. They weren't even up for it. But they were giving us stick, and then we were giving them stick because the VAR goal was disallowed after a check. Of course, it was the first time this 
ever in history in the Premier League that an overseas referee was refereeing a game and I thought it spells he looked much better standard than some of the referees. I think a couple of things he got wrong but overall I'll probably be score the referee an 8 out of 10. I thought he got the majority of stuff correct today. So yeah, so well done Mr Gillett, Gillett whatever you want to pronounce his name, the Aussie. Um, but that chance, that chance man, that one on one at the end man. Oh, Murphy's through. And it's similar to ESM, man. ESM dillies and dallies, but Murphy kind of dilly tries to dink it, put it to slot it, to slot a bottom corner, man. And we would have won the game right in the dying seconds. Disappointing. Two one ones I feel, have cost Newcastle United the three points today. <sighs> and now we've got injuries, don't get me wrong, but we do, on the positive, we look much better with four. Shock. We look better with four at the back. Who knew? So, another away game. Wolves next week. It's, a, it's, a, it's another tough eat while in you, which will be there once again. It took forever to drive during the day. I left at 8am in the car. Obviously, I stopped for half an hour, but um, I'm up to um, a few bits and bobs around because of my birthdays on the Monday. Um, I'm down in the London area for a few days now, so um, have a look at NFT React if you want to see what I'm up to. But here yeah, is the reaction from the Toon Camp. Well, that's a frustration for me, of course. You know, you, you can't dominate and have the opportunities we have and only be 1-0 up. The game should be over, eh? And, um, and we nearly got punished for it in the end, you know. Um, you know, Watford were going to have some part in the game, I thought, in the last five, ten minutes that caused us a few problems, which could have got them something in the game. But overall, we were by far the better team, but didn't take our chances. We've switched off. It's something what we pride ourselves on, and unfortunately, um, we've been caught with it. Actually, it was a poor corner, really, but they've got a they've got a point of contact on it. Um, but we knew Sar was going to come round the back, and unfortunately, um, we switched off. I think both teams went for it. I think both teams wanted to win. Um, we know how crucial it is for us to try and get our first win, so we went we went all out for it too. So uh, just disappointed that we didn't get it. Thirty seconds to go. I think he's questioned himself why he's gone to try and and try and finish like that when with his pace and his ability to go maybe around the goalkeeper or finish the way he normally does rather than trying something um, which obviously doesn't work. So that was the reaction from Newcastle United. So let's take a look briefly at the league table. Of course, we know that teams will be playing over this weekend, so Newcastle are probably going to drop down. But at this very moment at the time of recording, I believe Newcastle are just outside the relegation zone, but we have zero zero fucking wins a big fat zero and that includes cup as well which is frustrating every fucking newcastle fan a lot of steve bruce chants out we want steve bruce out loads of them a day it's cranking up it's getting louder and louder even when we scored afterwards there was bruce chants out when Watford var goal was given and disallowed there was chance for bruce out carl was saying that he might walk away i don't think bruce will i think bruce will want the money i think he'll be sacked and i said this Right, if the board are even even half considering getting rid of Steve Bruce, the time to do it would be after the Wolves game. Because if we didn't get a result at Wolves, you then got two weeks free to bring somebody else in. Because for me, there's times, not so much today, but there has been other times this season where they're not playing for the boss. And you see Green Jones coming over and he's telling the players what to do. That, no, no, it should be the manager. The players should be listening to the head coach. At the times they didn't listen. They didn't listen. Aye. But I hope from Vicarage Road. Going to love you and leave you. We've got to obviously go back, have a look at the match vlog. We've got a match reaction. We've got the lads online as well. Ta everyone. Bye bye.